Hello. This is uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld speaking to you again. Uh, I, again, I should uh, mention my uh, credentials. Uh, I have a scientific education in uh, the uh, general sciences uh, with a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Waterloo. And uh, I continue to uh, pursue my studies in the area of uh, political science at York University where I did my master's and taught in the departments of political science and social and political thought for three years during the 70s. And then I went on to do my doctorate at the uh, University de Quebec and Montréal, here in Montréal, Quebec, Canada. So uh, my scientific education was in honors degrees, uh, uh, honors uh, uh, courses, and uh, I, I switched in the fourth year to doing political science with uh, another uh, course in biology uh, to um, prepare myself to go into graduate studies because of the, uh, the necess necessity of doing uh, social analysis as well as scientific uh, research. Now, I'm speaking to you on the, the basis of both qualifications today because there is a serious lack of understanding of what the source of the infection is in the first place. First of all, while Trump uh, prefers to call this the uh, China virus, and uh, it did uh, originate in, in China, but for reasons that are uh, quite general and uh, similar to the outbreak of the Ebola virus in Africa, is because humans are eating animals. Humans are eating animals without even cooking them. Humans are eating animals that carry viruses that have not been uh, taken into consideration by the human, uh, uh, human evolution. So the body is not prepared to deal with these viruses and, uh, and so uh, they become uh, a pandemic before the body can actually uh, cope with it by producing the necessary antibodies. So what uh, is another uh, conspiracy theory on the origin of the virus is that there was some laboratory operating near Wuhan in China where the outbreak occurred, uh, which is uh, claimed to have uh, manufactured the virus through its experimentations of the Staphylococcus virus, uh, seeking to uh, turn it into some sort of a, a treatment for uh, a cure to the Sida um, uh, virus. It gets more and more complicated, doesn't it? So, actually this uh, laboratory in Wuhan province in China is a joint uh, project with the French Pharmaceutical Corporation. So if uh, this uh, conspiracy uh, theory, you know, is to blame uh, the China, the laboratory situated in China, it would equally have to blame the uh, French Pharmaceutical Corporation, which diminishes its political impact since the conspiracy theory has been manufactured in order to bring a disrespect uh, to China itself for political reasons and has no scientific value. Uh, it's likely that the uh, virus originated in a bat which was eaten by somebody and then passed it on. You know, there's a wet market, you know, of animals of various sorts, wild animals that are sought for consummation because it became a habit, you know, in China to eat, you know, any and all animals because, you know, China used to be starving. Okay, so that's where that originated from. And it's a practice that is no longer necessary. And it is uh, no longer necessary to eat animals in any case because, you know, vegetable sources of protein are um, pure, are abundant, and are as, um, as strong as, you know, uh, meat products. You know, meat only contains 20%, you know, protein. So does kyle, so does, you know, leguminous, you know, like uh, lentils. So, you know, there's no need to eat the meat in the first place. And this is a lesson that's going to be learned, you know, eventually. Now, the propagation of the virus has become a political issue as well. Because, uh, for instance, in, um, in Jerusalem, the government has been blaming the Orthodox Hasidic community for having propagated the virus 
uh, unnecessarily by going to the synagogue on Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah, New Year's and, uh, and the Day of Redemption, in which you know, uh, all uh, official Judaic uh, Jewish uh, people are required to be in a synagogue to be praying the whole day and fasting the whole day uh, as, a, as a practice of a, abolition. So, um, now they are being blamed, you know, for congregating in, uh, in, a, in a space, you know, that doesn't allow for social uh, distancing, uh, which allows for the virus to be propagated, which may very well be true. However, the uh, practice itself is uh, a matter of choice, and the Hasidic community is not generally approached, you know, for social contact by those who are not of the uh, Hasidic community. So to blame the Hasidic community for propagating the virus in the secular community is, you know, a false uh, premise to begin with. Secondly, it's a matter of choice, and the uh, Hasidic community consider it necessary, even at the risk of their own health and lives, to uh, to practice, you know, their uh, their uh, Yom Kippur. Now, in New York, the same thing happens. The Hasidic community congregates in synagogues and um, doesn't propagate the virus. What's the big difference between Jerusalem and New York? Because in New York, the Hasidic community has learned its lessons from previous pandemics because the European community of Jewish people who lived in ghettos, very compact, uh, congested communities, when a pandemic would occur in previous epochs and uh, centuries, learned how to deal with such pandemics. How? The story is this. There was a young man who wanted to protect his family, and so uh, one member of his family who became infected you know, with, the vi with the virus at the time, his, he took his blood, which was infected, of course, with the virus, in a syringe, injected it into a horse. The horse became ill, but the horse being um, an animal uh, with a uh, stronger immune system developed the necessary uh, antibodies to combat the virus. Then this youngster took the blood from the horse and used it as a transfer mechanism to bring the antibodies into another person who would then become healed of the viral infection or became immunized against the viral infection. And once this was proven to be the case, this was a treatment that was then used to immunize the other members of the community and so save the community. This lesson was retained by the Orthodox community, if not by the secular community. Perhaps, you know, some Jewish doctors or secularists also know about this, but the community as a whole was very much aware of this and had become accustomed to using this method of treatment of prevention. And so the Jewish community, Hasidic community in Williamsburg in New York sought out those people with large publicity panels on the side of buses asking them to go to the hospital and donate their blood so that their blood could be used for plasma convalescent transfers to other people so they could be healed or immunized. And it worked. In the com community of the Hasidim in New York City, there is not a larger proportion of people who are infected than otherwise. And the reason is because of the immunization campaign that they followed. This was granted one report in the New York Times with a photo showing two young guys, you know, donating their blood in the Mount Sinai Hospital. And Mount Sinai Hospital itself uses the convalescent plasma treatment in order to heal people and not yet to prevent people from becoming ill in the first place though. So in the United States there's about a thousand hospitals that are using the convalescent plasma treatment already and 70,000 people as according to Al Jazeera some months ago in its report has stated that you know 70,000 Americans have already been treated with the convalescent plasma successfully. Now, they're still testing it, you know, because they don't know how to 
use it, you know, in terms of the dosage. They don't know how to use it in terms of when to use it, at which stage of the illness to provide this treatment to the person who is ill. At first they were using it for people who were severely ill and were not responding to respirators and, uh, and other treatments. And uh, then it was found that people would respond uh, better to the uh, convalescent plasma treatment if they were given it to uh, in the early stages of the illness rather than in the lighter stages of the illness because it would prevent any further uh, serious complications and they wouldn't have to become severely chronically ill in order to be um, immunized. So the uh, testing has been successful as well in finding that you know it's better to treat people at an early stage and a further test could be used to find out if indeed it can be used to uh, be used as a preventative immunization for those people who have not yet become ill and who volunteered to become immunized which I would myself you know seek to do and I've asked to do so with my doctor here in Canada but no such treatments are available uh, outside of you know getting ill and going going to the hospital and in the hospitals themselves, it is not known uh, whether this treatment is being used, you know, for those people who are severely ill or initially infected either. So, all this information is not being presented to you by the uh, general commercial media. And it should be, but it is not. So that's why I have to make this video for you to know that the convalescent plasma treatment is available for prevention, for treatment of those who are already ill. And also to indicate that the convalescent plasma treatment, which is an advanced, scientifically advanced treatment, is more respected and utilized by the Hasidic community in New York City than it is by the general um, health care system, which is misnamed, since it is only a system that seeks to treat uh, the emergencies that arise without treating the necessary social biological needs of society as a whole. So. We can either fight this illness of the viral infection one by one, or we can take it on as a social measure and treat everyone at the same time. In order to treat everyone at the same time, we'd have to use billions of dollars of public funds, which are presently available and which are being reserved for paying for a vaccine, which may or may not work in a year, year or two years or three years time. So what do you vote for? immunization immediately or gambling on some virus uh, vaccine you know in the future and spending the money for something that's not even proven and which may even uh, have secondary effects which are undesirable it is necessary to stop the virus as soon as possible even among the people who are infected the virus has to be stopped quickly otherwise it spreads and infects other organs in the body not just the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, and the brain. Yes, the brain. This virus is small enough to pass from the blood-brain barrier. And once it's infected in these organs, you know, it doesn't uh, uh, give up easily. And uh, the uh, necessary antibodies, you know, could uh, perhaps not even be effective, you know, to the infection of those uh, uh, other organs um, once they've become infected. So this has to be an early treatment and it has to be a preventative treatment for those people who have not yet been infected. This is my recommendation based upon my qualifications and the research that I've done. The uh, article that I've written about this and published in the Gaza Post of Palestine, in French actually, is available and I can send it to you for free by way of my email address. And it has uh, an annex with all of the research uh, and reports that have been done that are uh, 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 included in the, uh, in the article uh, at the uh, website addresses indicated. And there's plenty of proof that uh, this uh, plasma convalescent treatment you know, works, that it's being used, that it is effective, and has no secondary effects. Okay, so I'll give you my email address now. S-A-A-L-A h a at f o k u s dot n a m e that's at salaha 
at focus.name. You just have to stop the video and replay it in order to get the, uh, the precise email address and I'll send you the um, article with all the research, you know, which proves, you know, what I've been telling you right now. Thank you for your attention and please um, forward this and share this with other people so that we can bring to bear the necessary uh, pressure to force the politicians and the scientific community to pay attention to this campaign, necessary campaign of social immunization. Thank you for your attention again and uh, agreeing you as, as uh, collaborators in this campaign for action to stop the pandemic. Now, the difference between Jerusalem and New York City that I've mentioned, you know, in terms of the Hasidic community, where the Hasidic community in New York City has successfully been able to uh, immunize itself so that it doesn't have a disproportionate degree of, of infection, unlike the Jerusalem community. This has led to an, an outbreak of another illness called anti-Semitism. Even the mayor and the governor of New York State have accused the Hasidic community of propagating the virus. This is very similar to, to uh, other anti-Semitic campaigns in previous pandemics and previous centuries. This is so primitive. It is so sad. First of all, you know, the Hasidic community in, in New York City is not disproportionately affected, even though they go to the synagogue or have weddings, they have become immunized and they take care, you know, of their elder population as well. So, you know, they're being blamed for something which is not even true in the first place. In Jerusalem, although it, there's a certain degree of, 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 of truth to the fact that they are disproportionately uh, infected, they are not necessarily passing on this infection to other people because there's very little contact between the Hasidim of Jerusalem and the secular community which doesn't even want to speak with them. So, what has happened in previous centuries? Huh. In previous pandemics, the Jewish community did not suffer as much from pandemics as the Christian communities. Why? Because they were using immunization strategy, as I've mentioned, and because it is a Jewish law that you wash your hands before eating elementary precaution. Now everybody knows you're supposed to wash your hands when you come in from, from when you come back home so that you don't transfer the you know the virus you know to uh, to your household environment and etc. And uh, uh, this was a rule of the uh, of Jewish law in Judaism since uh, what 3000 years. Now The Christian community did not wash its hands. They were, you know, naturalists. They would use their hands to eat food. They would grab food within their hands and eat it. And the only tool, utensil that was ever used was a knife. You know, it was, the forks and spoons were only invented in Italy long afterwards. You know, people were infecting themselves because they did not wash their hands. But they didn't know this. Or they didn't believe this. And they saw the Jewish community, on the other hand, not being affected by pandemics as much as the Christian community was. So the formal logic of the Christian mentality, of the white supremacist mentality, blamed the Jewish community for the pandemic, saying that it was the Jewish people themselves who had brought the pandemic to the Christians. When in fact it was the opposite, probably. So, what did the Christian community do? Their solution to the pandemic was to go and carry out pogroms. Pogrom is a mass massacre. They would go into the Jewish ghettos. Jewish people were already, you know, confined to certain areas and not allowed to live together with the Christian community. So there was, you know, rather little contact between the two communities. But nonetheless, the Christian communities would blame the Jewish communities for the infection that they were enduring. So they would go in and they figured, you know, if they killed the Jewish people, that that would stop the pandemic because there would be no more Jewish people to propagate the pandemic. And they would go and kill as many people, Jewish people as, as they could. And this was, you know, their solution to the pandemics of previous centuries. So, 
you know, this is still being practiced as a form of anti-Semitism by the mayor of New York and the uh, governor of New York State. Del Salvio and Como, you know, are practicing anti-Semitism and blaming the Jewish community for what is a generalized problem. So I'm explaining this to you so that this anti-Semitism can be denounced and explained for its fault, faulty logic. Incredible, you know, that you know, people who consider themselves to be civilized and educated would resort to such blatant um, irrationalities and blaming the Jewish community for a pandemic that is uh, <laughs> not of their origin and uh, not of their fault even because they have dealt with it in a much more uh, efficacious way than the uh, rest of the uh, social uh, milieu has done so far. So, again, I am promoting the immunization of the population on a mass scale with the convalescent plasma transfusions which will and can bring an end to this pandemic and bring back our social life and um, our social pursuits and our economic pursuits. So, please, uh, uh, share and, uh, and, uh, and forward this uh, information to other people that you know. And then you can take credit as well for stopping this pandemic. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye for now.